Did you know there's a secret climate killer lurking in your kitchen? Refrigerators contain greenhouse gases more potent than CO2. Some are thousands of times worse. Released into the atmosphere, they accelerate global warming. And not only fridges, most appliances that keep things cool use these refrigerants. They also created the hole in the ozone layer. That's why imitating these viral videos is a really bad idea. Managing refrigerants could do more to combat global warming than the combination of solar power on an industrial scale and over a hundred times as many electric vehicles. So what's the correct way to dispose of an old fridge? And are there any alternatives to these secret climate killers? Let's find out. First things first, why are these chemicals used to keep our food cold? I have this old freezer lying around. Let's see how it works. The cycle starts with the refrigerant piped into the freezer. Inside, it traps any heat via the heat exchange coil mounted at the back. The refrigerant then flows out of the freezer and through a second coil where it releases its stored heat. That's why the back of your fridge is always warm. Then the cycle starts again. But the properties that make refrigerants good at keeping things cool is exactly why they're bad for the climate. Greenhouse gases are essentially heat trapping gases. Chad's the lead researcher at Project Drawdown, an organization that measures and describes the most effective solutions to stopping global warming. Hydrofluorocarbons are what we currently are the predominant form of refrigerant gases. They're hundreds to thousands of times more potent a gas than carbon dioxide. So they're thousands of times better at trapping heat. And so that's why they make really good and effective uh, uh, refrigerants. Cooling things down has always been tricky, even before we knew about global warming. It all started with ammonia, first used around 1850. But because it can make people faint, it was phased out of home appliances. That's when safer, artificial options called F-gases were developed. The first generation of them were CFCs and HCFCs. There's a place for all your food. They didn't make people faint when they leaked out of faulty fridges, but it turned out they weren't safe for the atmosphere. In the 1980s, scientists noticed a giant hole in the atmosphere's ozone layer, which protects us from the worst of the sun's ultraviolet light. By tracking this imagery for the past nine years, they have discovered a trend. Each spring over Antarctica, a hole in the ozone develops, and it has been getting larger year by year. They homed in on chlorine in the atmosphere from CFCs and HCFCs as the culprit. We could mobilize the political will required to agree on a strong ozone protocol. So in an almost fairy tale like moment in 1987, countries from around the world signed the Montreal Protocol. It phased out the refrigerants that were destroying the ozone layer and replaced them with second generation gases that don't, HFCs. The hole in the ozone layer is healing now, though its size varies with global temperatures. Unfortunately, the public stopped paying attention. And these second generation refrigerants have turned out to be one of the biggest drivers of global warming. While HFCs don't contribute to the hole in the ozone layer, they do trap thousands of times more heat than CO2. Their effect is expressed in global warming potential, which is... The potency of a greenhouse gas over a specific period of time uh, in relation to CO2. Paolo is project leader of the Greenpeace campaign to raise awareness about the dangers of HFCs. As the planet warms, people use more coolant every year. In India, refrigerator purchases are projected to increase 60% from 2017 to 2022. The majority of them contain HFCs. So countries came together again in 2016 to ban these new refrigerants. The resulting Kigali Amendment to the Montreal Protocol came into effect in 2019. Some countries, like EU members, are already using alternatives. In others, the switchover is slower. So what kind of alternatives are there? One category is a new type of synthetic refrigerants, HFOs. While HFCs have global warming potentials in the thousands, the new generation is under 10. But these might affect the environment in unforeseen ways. HFCs were the fix for the previous set of refrigerants and 
you know and now we realize that there's another problem with hfc so we're moving to another generation of refrigerants over time Shekha is in charge of policy work related to cooling in India for the Council on Energy, Environment and Water in Delhi. Maybe we just need to go towards natural refrigerants because we still don't know what the life cycle consequences of these new synthetic refrigerants are going to be. She's referring to concerns about HFOs. HFO production is often connected to the production of site products and these can be toxic or damaging to to climate. Philip is the deputy director of the Circular Economy branch of Environmental Action Germany. Then the HFO itself if it's released to the atmosphere it can be uh, after some time it can uh, turn into TFA which is a, another compound which is quite persistent in environment and where it's not exactly clear um, how damaging it is. Meanwhile, we know natural options are more climate friendly. Remember ammonia? It has a global warming potential of 0. My freezer contains a hydrocarbon which has a global warming potential of 3. There's also carbon dioxide which by definition has a global warming potential of 1. Now, ammonia makes you faint and hydrocarbons are flammable, but technology has improved significantly to address these issues and these gases have been in use in the EU since the mid 1990s. My freezer has never exploded. European Union legislation aims to cut HFC emissions by two-thirds by 2030. That's equivalent to one billion return flights from Paris to New York. But the transition in Europe and around the world could be moving faster. One reason it's not is cost. When you replace gases, very few of them are retrofitable, right? So it's not that the existing equipment that you have, you can just change the gas. Uh, you know, if you just change the gas, then your appliance is not going to work. Also, the new generation of synthetic refrigerants are only made by certain chemical companies. Natural ones could be more widely produced. They keep on inventing a new solution that then 10 years later you need to phase out. But that's the, the business model. That's how they make profit. Instead of just going right away, leapfrog to natural refrigerants. I spoke to a large refrigerant manufacturer about synthetic versus natural refrigerants for this piece, but afterwards they wouldn't let me use the interview. While waiting for less harmful refrigerants, 40% of the gas in Indian appliances escapes during maintenance. In the EU and US, 90% is released at the end of an appliance's life. And that's why disposal is so important. Remember the guys that threw their fridge off the cliff? The Spanish police made them drag it back up and fine them 45,000 euros. So what can you do with an old appliance? If it still works, you can donate it to an NGO. If you need a new appliance, you can give the old one back to the manufacturer. Some producers accept old refrigerators even without the purchase of a new one. The other option is to recycle it. You can take your fridge and drop it at a recycling center and they will send it on to a recycling plant. But this step isn't as straightforward as you'd think, even in recycling-loving Germany. If you look at the, uh, at the treatment of old refrigerators, we have a very big problem in Germany because the recycling plants don't work according to state of the art. In fact, only six out of 20 recycling plants in Germany are licensed to recycle cooling and freezing appliances. There is still more than one million tons of avoidable carbon dioxide emissions arising from um, yeah, not state of the art recycling of old fridges in Germany. This is why both the switch to alternative refrigerants and legislation on recovering them are so important. Raising awareness is also key. I don't think that sensibility exists about the connection of global warming with your air conditioners and your fridges and, and you know, other applications. So while we're waiting for our fridges to stop becoming climate killers, remember, the worst thing you can do is dispose of them on the street. If you enjoyed this video, we have new ones every Friday, so don't forget to like and subscribe.